Hi, so this is a tutorial to show you how to use Gecko together with Copperland and the Elysium MS812 to actually control analog synthesizers uh, with Gecko and the Leap Motion Controller. So this is the final setup. So I have a kind of three-dimensional theremin here where pitch is up and down, volume is back and forth, and filter is left and right. And so what happens is, I've got Gecko that is interpreting the uh, messages from the Leap Motion Controller. This is then going through the Copperland Manager where you can see here uh, in the overview that Gecko is connected to the MS-812. This is the MS-812, which is receiving all this data over an Ethernet, Ethernet cable, so you can actually can put it anywhere in your uh, local network. You have the CV outputs here going straight into my Moog Slim Fatty here in the back. And then this is going to my audio interface, which is then being recorded on the computer. And it's got some uh, delay effects in there uh, just to make it sound a little bit sweeter. Um, so this is the final setup so that you can see what, what happens when it's working. Um, let's start from scratch. So I've got Gecko and I'm going to clear out, create a new configuration. And you can see that when I move my hand, none of the squares are colored. It's all just gray, meaning that the data is being detected, but it's not used for anything. Um, at the same time, you can see here that the Elysium MS-812 is connected through Copperland because the uh, green dot here to the right is almost constantly flickering. Um, if I would remove this Ethernet cable, um, then you can see that there is no activity and Copperland is just uh, pinging, saying, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, a nice thing here is that you see in the Copperland manager that this automatically updates, so the MS-812 is gone. Uh, when I reconnect the Ethernet cable, the configuration will be done automatically and uh, the Copperland manager will figure out uh, which devices are connected. Um, so about the 812, this is an extremely configurable uh, device. You can do almost anything that you can imagine. And they really leveraged the capabilities of Copperland to expose uh, rich information about all uh, the possibilities of uh, the CV and the digital outputs here uh, from the Elysium device. Um, so the first thing you'll have to do is to go to edit mode in Copperland Manager and click on the MS-812 and set up some settings. So um, let me now start from scratch. So I've got direct control, which is kind of the default setting you will be working with, which means that all the CV jacks here are set for direct control. Uh, direct control means that any value that is being sent through Copperland to the MS-812 will be sent straight out over CV. Um, this might be what you want. Most of the times, it is not what you want. Um, let's now say that I want to uh, configure, first of all, the, the gate. So the fact that I, when my hand moves into range of the Leap Motion Controller, uh, then I actually trigger a note. So to do this, I'm going to take out, actually, most of uh, the CV cable cables here from the Moog. So I'm only keeping one connected here. This is the gate connection. Let me just check if that's correct. Uh, so that is the keyboard gate, yes, which is um, on the Elysium going out on CV3 here. So CV3, I basically want a direct connection. I only want open or closed. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the connection interface, take Gecko, and when my left hand is present, I want to connect that data to the MS-812, select the performance setting, and I want direct control over CV3, right? So once that is connected, I can see here CV3 direct control, and when I put my hand in, you can you can hear that basically the gate is going open. Um, but for the rest, nothing has been configured. Uh, I can't control pitch and I can't control volume. So let's now um, control pitch. So pitch, I would like to use CV1. Um, so this is my red cable here with uh, a little marker on. So this is CV1. Uh, let me connect that to pitch, which is the second <coughs> CV input on the Moog. Um, so currently it's not doing anything. But what I want to do is I want to set the CV1 
role to actually uh, the monophonic modifier one. This allows you inside the Copperland Manager to actually uh, completely configure how the values have to be scaled and how they have to behave before they're actually converted to CV. Um, so going back to the connection interface, I want to use up and down motion for uh, pitch, which is the left hand open position Y. Um, so I want to do this on my hand is open. I connect the data, browse for a destination, which is going to be the monophonic one channel. And I'm going to connect it to the modifier A value. So you can see it's doing something, but it's not very useful because the range is not correct. So now I can go back to the edit interface uh, and go to the performance settings of the monophonic one channel. And if you see here, the modifier A output is actually very fine grained. So I can tone down the range, let's say around 25%, and then move up the base values. So I can really dial in the tones that I want to use here, so the range of frequency. So that's for pitch. Um, now let's connect uh, volume. So volume, I want to, again, go to the settings of the um, MS-812. Um, and so the CV jacks, the, let's say that CV2 here, this is a blue wire, I all want to connect volume to that. Um, and let's say that I'm using the monophonic 2 channel here and use the modifier A from there. Um, so you're probably wondering why am I not connecting this to pitch and velocity because these are specifically uh, for when you are sending MIDI over Copperland. Um, since here we're actually not going over MIDI, we are directly controlling uh, Copperland values, we can use just the data uh, as modifier values instead of actually having to do any kind of pitch conversion. Um, so here I've got CV2 that is going to use the monophonic 2 channel. Um, and I'm going to connect back and forth, so the Z position here, I'm going to connect that to the MS-812, uh, the monophonic 2 channel, and again, um, the modifier A value here. So once that is connected, nothing is happening. Why? Because I haven't plugged in the CV cable. So let me do that here. So I'm plugging in the CV cable in the volume. This is my fourth track here on the Slim Fatty. And you can you can see that it's more or less useful, but it's I want to tweak the range again a little bit. Um, so let me go to the performance settings here, monophonic two channel, go back down to the modifier here. So I tweaked that a little bit, and now finally I'm going to connect the filter, which is going to go out over CV4. Let's uh, plug that into the third channel here, the third CV input channel. And um, I'm going back to the settings of the CV jacks, and so CV4, I want to connect that to the mono channel Four. You could take mono channel three because there's an intermediate connection layer there. Um, but I like to keep it kind of straight. So the monophonic four modifier A value will be connected to the CV four uh, row. Obviously, you have the advantage here that if this would change in the future, you can still uh, leverage this intermediate layer so that you can reassign uh, and use, uh, for example, connect CV2 to uh, output 4 and stuff like that. Um, so this is really handy for, for later on. Um, so now I want to connect, let's say, left and right, which is the uh, X position here. I'm browsing for the MS-12, connecting that to the monophonic 4 uh, modifier value again. Um, now I can go back here to uh, the performance parameters and tweak how the filter should, should behave. So let's say that I want to have a little bit wider control. 
like an offset is also a little bit. So that's that. And now what you can do is you can go to the settings of the uh, MS812, save this, um, and then another nice thing is inside Gecko, you can see that all these assignments have been made automatically. So you can see which channels have been sent to Copperland here. And you can visually also see which actual gestures have influence on the, um, on the sound that you're making. And when you save this, it will actually save all the connections. Um, so let's, let's take a look at the Copperland manager here. Um, so you can see that Gecko here in the overview is connected to the MS-812. Let's clear this out. So I'm creating a new document, discarding all my changes. And you can see that the connection goes away. Um, now I can open up a previous document that I created and you can see that the connection is automatically made and this will connect all these channels at the same time. Uh, similarly, I can go to the MS-812, uh, pick one of the uh, settings that I saved here, load it in and now I've got the configuration that I had when I started with this tutorial. So I hope you found this useful. Um, I think that Copperland really exposes a whole new world of connectivity in the music world um, because you've got high resolution data uh, being exchanged between all the devices. It is network transparent, so you can just connect any Ethernet cable uh, on your local network and have your devices uh, anywhere that you want. And it is uh, very smart about the data types and the ranges and the different ways that you can actually uh, handle the, the, the musical information that you want to connect to any of the devices that you're using. Thank you for watching and I hope this was useful for you. Bye.